God's word is what it is. When he said it, listen, it put it in motion. But the Bible says, and they, the Bible says, and the children of Israel turned back in the day of battle. And they limited the Holy One of Israel. In other words, they, they bound God's hand. The Bible says, and they limited the Holy One of Israel. How do you limit God? How do you limit God that has no limit, has no boundaries? In other words, God couldn't do what he wanted to do for them because, listen, they, they wouldn't stay with the principles. They didn't have no faith. And the Bible says, and they turned back in the day of battle. And it cost a whole nation 40 years. You are causing yourself years of unproductive product, product, productivity. You, you, you're being productive, but nothing is happening. There's no fruit. There's nothing you can look back on and say, listen, I was obedient here. I did. I followed the principles here. Therefore, God had to release it. The Bible says God doesn't shut up heaven and release heaven. He said, you do. He said, whatsoever you find on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loose. In other words, he said, whatever you give me the authority to do, I can do all things. But it's based on your faith, based on, based on my principles, based on uh, uh, several factors, his purpose, his, his, his destiny for you. So I'm telling you, I am so excited about what God is doing in your life and my life. If you're not excited about the gospel, listen, just quit it. Go out there and just raise hell and go on to hell. Just go do whatever you want to do because it, it's not prospering you anything. But if you're serious about this, listen, just get in, enjoy the ride, enjoy the blessing. Time and chance happen to us all. It's life. There's going to be some sickness in life. There's going to be some death in life. There's going to be some disappointments in life. There's going to be some frustration in life. But listen, but God said, what? Be of good cheer. I've overcome. Well, how, how many of them? All of them. Amen. Amen. Um, so I, I think right now, I think, I, I think I'm excited. How about you all? Come on, give God a praise in the house. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm excited. Tonight, we're starting a new chapter in 1 Timothy. It's chapter 4, and chapter 4 um, runs along the same rails as coming out of chapter 3. Um, and so let's pick up the, ver the end of chapter 3 because I need to show you the contrast of what we were dealing with in chapter 3 uh, as we went over into chapter 4. So 1 Timothy chapter 4. 3, the end, uh, 316 is what I want. And the apostle Paul was, is, of course, is talking to his son in the faith. And he was talking about uh, great is godliness. And so he said, let me read chapter, uh, verse 16. He says, without controversy or power, great and weighty, and confess without controversy or mystery is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit. He was seen of angels. He was preached unto the, unto the Gentiles. He was believed on in the world. And finally, he was received up in glory. Now, the apostle Paul, he breaks just a little bit. Remember, he's writing to his son in the faith, Timothy. And he says, now, now, and you pick up a verse, well, you see the word now? Okay. A better translation for that, through my research, would be but. And what did I tell y'all about the buts? It's the flip side. And the flip side is always the opposite side. So right off the bat, we see a, a, a contrast. He says, now, greatest is the mystery of godliness. He said, but the Spirit speaketh. 
Now, we finna get into something. He says, now, people talk about this and that. He said, but now, right now, the Spirit is speaking concerning about, concerning present and the future. And it's going to speak of the past. He said, but here it is. He said, but now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That means distinctly. In other words, the spirit of, a, of the living God is now the voice of heaven. Jesus is going back. Pentecost has come. The Holy Spirit is present in the earth and is operating in his church. So the spirit is the voice from heaven. And he says, so now the spirit speak expressively. And what is it saying? It says, that in his what is saying that in latter times some shall depart from the faith. Now we're gonna see in several places in scripture you see the word last times, the last days, and latter times or latter days. Now there is a distinction between the two. Now Depend on what theologian you, that you're speaking to or what to, uh, uh, teacher that you're talking. Some will say they are synonymous. Last time, last days, latter days, last days. They are all synonymous. But um, there's a, a small, a, a slight variation between the two. Paul is speaking here. Paul is saying in latter times of what? Latter times of of this ministry, of this gospel going out. Because here it is, even in the natural, if I start a rumor on this side of the room, by the time it gets to that side of the room, so everybody translating what they hear, by the time it get over here, it's going to be something totally different. Okay, it is called, as later, not the last days as the days of Christ. We're not dealing with that yet. Okay, Paul will make reference to it. Paul, uh, P, uh, 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 Peter will make reference to it. Jesus will make reference to it in the book of Revelation. And Paul will bring it up again in the book of uh, Hebrews. But now we're just talking about the proliferation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Paul, because Paul said, great is the ministry or the mystery of godliness. He said, now, but here's what, here's what the Spirit is saying. It says that some shall depart from the faith. How? Giving heed to seducing spirits. And the other half is the doctrines of demons um, or devils. Same thing, demons, devils. So in other words, what's going to spoil godliness and cause a rip in a tear in this gospel is those that will come along and teach some other gospel when there is no other gospel. But they will pollute, dilute, and they will tarnish and stain the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul is warning his son, Timothy. Timothy is somewhere probably around 30, 35 years old. He's a young man. But he's in the faith, and he's and Paul has sent him sent him down to Ephesus, and he's and he's standing, and he's dealing with all these uh, heady people, okay? And he's called, and he's dealing with all these elderly people, and so he's saying, now listen, some is going to come in, and they're going they're going to pollute the gospel. It is up to the church, the church. Again, in, in verse 14 and 14 and 15, according to um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, that the church is the very pillar and the very ground of truth. And so through the church, we must hold truth. Now, what's going to happen is just what is happening right now. Some is going to pervert the gospel. And now... Let's look, let's look at a couple of scriptures. Let me, let me read this opening line for you. Let me get a quick outline. In this chapter, the Apostle Paul gives clear warning to the coming apostate of the church, the apostate of the church. The apostate is, is another word, is, excuse, is to forsake or to turn against a set cause or a set party. 
That's the word apostate. Okay, apostate is not a spiritual word. It is just a word. But when you put it to the apost dealing with the apostate of the church, apostate of the gospel, I mean, that's what they're going to do. They're going to turn against the church or they're going to leave the gospel of Jesus Christ. And therefore, it's called apostasy. And so that's a great apostasy. So, so I titled this particular teaching, The False Doctrine and the Apostles and Apostate is on the Rise. You may not know it, but apostate is on the rise. Now, here's what he said. He said, now, he, tell, he, he tells his uh, son, Timothy, the coming apostate, uh, apostate of the church in the latter days. Secondly, he reminds Timothy of his liberty in Christ and urges Timothy to teach such instructions in the church uh, in, in, the, uh, in this freedom. Remember, the church, we are under grace. We are not bound by any law. You're not bound by any law. You say, oh, oh, Pastor Hola, what do you mean if we're not bound by any law? We obey God out of love, not out of restriction. The law serves one purpose. The law serves one purpose, to tell you you're a sinner. That's the purpose of the law. The law is not here. The law can't save. It only identifies and what's the other thing that the law do? Condemn. It can't justify. Okay? And so he's saying, listen, understand your freedom. Now, here it is. Now, let me straighten it out since I said that. Grace is not a license to sin. The Apostle Paul said, shall we continue in sin because grace abound? He said, God forbid. How shall we that are, that are dead to sin live there any longer? So we don't, so we don't, we don't, do, we, we don't do things because we are restricted from it. We, won't, we don't do things because it doesn't please our Heavenly Father. We're operating under grace. And grace, again, is not a license. Okay? So he's, he, he, Paul is uh, uh, telling Timothy, teach the church. Why? Because it's going to pull them from up under this false, this false doctrine, this false teaching that tried to nail you, pin you to a law, and keep you in condemnation, rather in conviction, where the Holy Spirit speaks to you about conviction, you accept the conviction, and you turn and ask God for forgiveness. He forgives you. Why? Because you're under grace. Okay? Then finally, Paul gives his son uh, in the faith guidance as a respect to his ministry, to his doctrine that he teach, that he's teaching the church and the care of the church. That's the whole outline to chapter four. So let's start looking at the apostate piece. Now, let's go to John 16. John 16. John chapter 16, pick up at verse 13, I think is where I want to start at. Now, I want you all to listen to what Paul is doing here. Now, Jesus is speaking. Now, Jesus is speaking. Let's pick up verse, yeah, let's pick up verse 12. Here's what Jesus says. I have yet things to say unto you. But what, is it, what, 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 what does he say in, in verse 12? What does he say? Read it out loud. Come on, give it to me. But you cannot bear them now. He said, I have, I have so many things I want to impart to you. I want to give unto you, but you're not able to bear them. This is how a preacher or a pastor feels many times about his church. So many things I want to share with you, but you're not able to bear them. You say, Pastor, what do you mean I'm not able to bear? All you need to do is speak. No. The thing is, the Bible said, do not cast your pearls to the swine. 
And I'm not calling you swine. I'm just using an example. What's the use of me giving you a, a pearls of wisdom when you won't take simple instructions? You haven't obeyed the first set of instructions that I've given you. How, you didn't know, how do you know? Because I see it in your action. I see it in your behavior. I see it in your treatment. I see it in your demeanor. I see it in your works. I see it in your service. I see it in your giving. I see it in your living. So what's the use of me to, uh, 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 to keep giving you uh, the uh, pearl, pearls of wisdom? God said in the book of Isaiah, he said, why should you be stricken? Why should you be stricken anymore? You just rebel more and more. That's what the Lord said in the book of Isaiah. In other words, why should I continue to give you wisdom and all, and you don't, you don't do the first thing. You're just going to rebel more and more. So he's saying, Jesus said, so many things I want to say to you, but you're not able to bear them. Because here it is. Because your mind has not been renewed. But he does go on in verse 13, it says this. His verse 13 says, he said, but how be it when he, the spirit of truth, he said, he said, I tell you what, you can't bear it now. He said, but I tell you what, when the spirit of truth, when he is come, he shall guide you into all truth. Why? Because he shall not, or for, he shall not speak of himself. Okay, the contrast. If he ain't speaking of himself, what's the flip side? But whatsoever he, he shall hear, that shall he speak. In other words, things that I want to speak to you, you're not able to ha uh, handle them. But listen, I'm going to send the spirit that's going to remain with you. And as you grow, he'll be able to give unto you and release unto you the things that I want to give to you now that you can't handle because you're not mature enough. Do that make sense? The parable is used to hide a truth until you're ready to receive it. The parable doesn't change. It is. Jesus said, let him that has an ear hear what who? The Spirit is saying. So he was talking to them in a parable, but because they were not ready to receive it, they, could, they, didn't be, they weren't able to understand the parable. And as you were walking along, you get, get some out of Scripture, you say, oh, I got it. Now you're ready to receive it. How many times that happened to you? It should be numbers of times. I tell you, it happened to me all the time. I read Scripture over and over and never could understand it. And then I'm walking and studying and meditating. And sometimes I'm not even thinking on the Scripture. That particular scripture, and just say, oh my God, oh my God, oh, I didn't see it. I wasn't, I wasn't able to bear it. He said, but how be it when the spirit, here it is, the spirit, the spirit is the workhorse, if you would, in respect to the Godhead. The spirit, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, he has come. He will guide you. He's the workhorse into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you what things to come. Okay, now let's go back to the scripture. Verse 1. Now the Spirit is speaking. So the Spirit is telling you, here's what's about to happen. Okay, he says now, go go to uh, uh, go back to um, uh, John. Okay, pick up pick up thirteen, pick up thirteen, and go to fourteen. Okay, fourteen. He says now. He said now fourteen. He said now he shall glorify me. For he shall receive y'all y'all need to. Catch this. He shall glorify me. The Holy Spirit is never here to be glorified. 
is here to glorify Christ. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of what? Look in the Bible, what it says, follow along. He shall receive of mine and show it unto you. Why? All things, what? All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say that he shall take a mine and shall shoe unto you. So what I'm doing, I'm violating, I'm validating that the spirit is the person of the Godhead that's in the earth that's giving direction to the church. So in the last days, the spirit speaketh expressly. Amen. Now. Go over to 1 Corinthians, I mean 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. Don't look at the board because we don't have nobody monitoring the ship now. All right, 2 Corinthians 11, uh, verse 13. You got to say, got it, wait on me. Y'all got it? 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 13. All right. He says, for as for such are false prophets. I, now I'm gonna have to back up. Let me I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go back there and back up. I, I, I'm gonna have to show you this, how, how it unfolds. Uh, see y'all y'all get dependent on them slides, don't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> 11 and, pick up 11 and, uh, yeah, I'm going to pick up, I'm going to pick up 11, I'm picking 12, okay. But what, but what do I, no, no, that I, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. So what is, so Paul is dealing with, False teachers here. And I'm just kind of picking up in the middle of the, um, the pericope here. And so he's, he, he's, he's laying this out. He said, for such are false, uh, false what apostles. In other words, they're trying to keep and get a following for themselves. They're trying to keep people to, to, to corral them up, up under the umbrella of this false doctrine, this false teaching. If you don't believe false doctrine is going out in the world, listen to some of the stuff that's going out over the ads. I don't listen. Some of the biggest churches on television, they, they, they push a false doctrine. They take in the word and they elongate and they stretch in the word, trying to make this word the, the, um, um, with all the hyperbole. They, they, they make it, they, they're extravagating the word and stretching it out. And they and they find some little hook that they think they got, and they and they get the crowd worked up in a fan uh, in a frenzy, and everybody start hollering up something crazy. It's not sound doctrine. They took one scripture, looked in one listen one line out of a scripture, found a little word, and they used that, and they hung their whole doctrine or their whole theology on that one thing. That's not sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is a whole conglomerate. The scriptures fit, fit join fit together. Don't let no one build a doctrine of, of one verse, one word. Sure, listen. Any knucklehead preacher, you don't have to be a good preacher. Can look in the scripture and get a word and get people going crazy. What about sound doctrine? Most, most here's where, where most false doctrine come in. They take the they take the scriptures and they lift them up out of context, and they use them, not understanding how it fits in the whole scheme of things. Line upon line, y'all hear me say it? Precept upon precept, here a little. They're little, speaking with stammering tongues, but they shall stumble and fall. Now, 
when you hear that. Most people think that's an exhortation. That's an exhortation. It's not. It's twice that is used in Scripture. One is used as a mockery. They mock in the people of God. But then God turns it around and uses it, said he will speak to, to them in stammering tongues. Why? Because they, 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 uh, they debase when the prophets come. Because they say, prophet, don't prophesy to us. Go, go elsewhere. Read the scriptures. It's so many times like this in scripture that well, false doctrine is false teaching come and people don't know any better because they 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 biblically illiterate. It's not a bad thing. It's just a consistent thing. Why? Because good Bible learning takes time. It takes study. Never be impressed with people that can use Greek and Hebrew when you speak English. Because you don't know whether they're right or wrong. Don't be, don't be impressed. Greek and Hebrew should only be used to bring clarity to a, to a certain uh, scripture that you may understand the, um, the origin of the word or what they, what, listen, not what they translated, what they transliterated. It's a difference between translate and transliterate. It's a difference. Look them up. Okay. And so, so if, if they're using Greek and Hebrew, they're pulling it probably from, uh, probably the Latin Vulgate or the Septuagint. Okay. These are early edition of scriptures. And so, because it was Latin, it was all in Latin, so we don't speak Latin. So when King James authorized the the um, uh, um, the printing of uh, the translation of the King James Bible into English, it was done in the 1600s. That's why we have the these, thus, thou, those, and thee, and them. Why? It's 1600 language. We don't speak with these, thou, thus, those, and these. We say you and me. And this is why most people find the Bible difficult to understand because they don't know when you're talking about you or talking about me. Okay? And, and, that, and that style of writing, you have to understand that style of writing because they will write sometime in reverse. Or when they write, then they'll stop down, drop down the next line and write the same thing in another way. It's just the same thing. And, but when you don't understand the origin and, 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 and the style of writing, someone who's considered themselves learned, they take the scriptures and twist them, have you all over the place. Because my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Why? Because they reject knowledge. Sound Bible study. I'm not impressed with anyone who can lay scriptures together. Common man, the lay person in the street, in, in the church, should be able to lay scriptures together. All right, this is your constitution. This is your constitution. You don't know what's in your law. You don't know your rights. So, well, the only reason we hire a lawyer is because we're too lazy to read the constitution and the laws. They go to school, they learn the Constitution and the laws, and they learn where they're located. They don't carry this knowledge around in their head. And when they go before the court, here's what they do. They offer up certain cases to, listen, to see the precedent that was set on this particular case, why? That the, ju 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 the judiciary system shall continue along that same line of thereabout, so we won't have a great dis uh, discrimination between uh, 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 um, judges. Listen, this is simple. But the Spirit is here. Now listen, in the last days, listen, false prophet is going to rise. But most of us can't distinguish a false prophet. It's not because he left out a word that he quoted scripture. That ain't make no false prophet. 
Because not that he quotes scripture to Rome. That don't make him a false prophet. It's not that he don't know his scripture. That don't make him a false prophet. What makes him a false prophet is when he go against, listen, against this word and can teach contrary to the word. But how do you know when he's when he's so closely aligned with the word that you can't tell the difference? I know I'm talking right. Most of the church are dumbed down by false prophets. Because why? They make me feel good. If you feel good. I'm talking about your salvation. I'm talking about your eternity. And only the word of God, the true word of God, the Bible says, how be it, he, the spirit of truth, when he comes. Are you with me? Now, listen. Now, get, uh, I'm, still, I'm still, have I hit 13 yet? No, sir. Um, 11, okay. 11 and 13. Okay. Here it is. Okay. For such a false prophet, they doing what? Deceitful. Deceitful. Listen, they work hard at deceiving you. My brothers and sisters, listen to me. Listen to me. Unless you're studied and real, um, really, you spend time in the Word. They are so good. They listen. They will smooth you right over, and you never catch it. You don't study enough to catch the false prophets. Hear what I say? You don't study enough, and I mean you. You don't study enough to catch the false prophets. They ain't not going to tell you they're a false prophet. They're not going to tell you, well, all this is not necessarily true. They slide it in just while you're shouting. Okay? They are good. Satan is good at what he do. He is an expert. Only the Spirit of God can detect him. Listen to what I'm saying. I can't detect him. You can't detect him. Only the Spirit of God can detect Satan. The Bible says, listen, for the Word of God is what? Quick and powerful. Dividing the Son to what? The soul and the spirit. He, is, he, he can detect that. And so, so, so now, now here it is. He said, now listen. Here, here's how they do it. They, they're deceitful workers. How, doing what? Transforming themselves into the apostles of who? Christ is right here. I'm telling you. You're impressed with him. Oh, he can quote that scripture. Oh, he can quote that scripture. And people are impressed. He come up, he said, uh, okay, let, hey, let us quote the 100 Division of Song. Let's quote the 100 Division of Song. What's the 100 Division of Song? What's the 100 Division of Song? And he quotes and he rallies it off. And he said, oh, my God. I can quote those scriptures. Oh, he know that Bible. No, he don't. He has committed it to memory. He has recorded it on his memory bank for easy access. Why? For manipulation of the unlearned, the untrained ear. Him that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When the false prophets start speaking, if you have the ear, if, if you have the spirit, the ear to hear, the spirit say, don't listen to nothing he's saying. Here's what he said. He said, here they, they transform themselves into an angel of light. He said, therefore, it, it is. Therefore, it is a what? No great thing if his minister, talking about Satan, you come with Satan, or dress as Satan again, if his ministers also be what? Transformed as a minister of righteousness. Those who uh, whose end shall be according to their works. False prophets. Apostates on the rise. Now, here it is. 
This is what's going to get most of us. We're hung up. Well, we should be concerned, but we're hung up on the same-sex marriage in church. We're hung up on abortion in church. I mean, it, or in, among Christian though, we have a stand, and God is our and God is our uh, standard bearer. What God says is what we say. But Satan used that to distract us while he slide his listen his deceitful gospel in. He gets you to look in one way, and he come in another way. We are so gullible. We are so gullible. When, when God said, I won't have you to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Now, I'm not saying those issues should be addressed. And we, we listen, we take our stand like God takes his stand. Okay? But the thing is, while, while, while we're so busy, all our attention over here, He's, he's coming through the back door, and nobody's paying any attention. And he sets up his kingdom, and he looks as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. This is not done under neon lights. Satan is not a fool. He know you're not, uh, and I'm going to use this word. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about us. He know we, we are not stupid enough or fool enough for him to blatantly teach certain things because he know we're not going to accept that. So listen, he has to lace it in among those that are unlearned, untrained, untaught, unschooled, unkept, unspirit, carnal-minded, and he works on us. It's on the rise in the church across the listen, entire scope of the world, not just in the United States. And, and so everyone think and get upset about these other religions and stuff. We already know. We know them. We know Buddha, Muhammad, Confucius, Scientologists. We already know that's some craziness. Mormonism, all that. So we have that down. And you think Satan is going to come, gonna let, gonna come up here and say, listen, I'm a false prophet. Let me get up in the pool here. No, he's going to come in well-groomed, a great orator, well-spoken. I mean, everything is, I mean, it's a boy, but he got it together. Do not be put off by what you see on television or what you perceive to be the good churches. Satan lives. That's one of his breathing grounds. But listen, the Bible says, listen, there's a road. It's, it's, a, it's a broad road. And how many find it? Many find it. He said, but there's a narrow road. And how many find it? Few that find it. Every now and then you see a stranger on the road. Song say, stranger on the road, trying to get home. I'm just a stranger. Why? Because you're preaching sound doctrine. Nobody wants to hear sound doctrine. Why? It's too boring. Like Satan me. Light me up. Let me jump all over the place. Well, you have to be, they have to be, they have to have it going on. Why? They have police from one end of the place to the other. You can't get in there. You have to get in there early in the morning. You better, you better, you better be aware of you going. Go to Galatians. Galatians 2, please. Verse 4. I want to seat you all in this false doctrine. Do not listen to everything that you hear. Just call somebody and say, God. Most every religion call their God, God. Galatians 2 and 4. Are you ready? He said, now, and that because of what? What's the word say? False brethren. Send it what it says. It says who? It didn't say the world. It said false church members. Anytime you hear the word with Paul, when he say brethren, he's talking about those that are affiliated and attached to the church. He said, because the false brethren 
unaware they were brought in. Who came in how? Privately, simply, quietly. Sit, you know, just wait, just waited for their turn. And they began to work and weave their way through the congregation. You know, yeah, brother, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pastor don't know that. Yeah, yeah, brother, you got it. Oh man, oh, oh, brother, I ain't never heard nobody say, oh my God, you got it. And do y'all know people run after this mess? Because they're grint. Willingly. Pastor just preach a message the Sunday before. Beware of false, uh, of false, of false brethren. And somebody come right along and scoop you right up. He said, now, it is. Why, why did he come? Who came in privately to spy out our what? Our liberty. In other words, they came to put you back in bondage with false doctrine. Here it is. Most of us, we don't get what God has promised us because we won't do what God tells us. Everyone has an opinion about God's word. Now in peril. And you come into church, been saved a half a day, and you want to challenge the pastor in the word. It doesn't work. Now, me personally, I've been laboring in, in this world over some 25 years. Laboring. And I'm not just talking about carrying the Bible. I mean laboring. Listen, if the Lord would speak out, he would tell you so. Study this word. I don't know everything. I don't, matter of fact, I probably know that much of all this I need to know. I might know that much. But that I do know. I know, and the Holy Spirit is sealed into me. So, so he said, they come in privately and they, they spy out your liberty to bring you back into bondage. I was talking to someone the other day and I was saying the problem with the church is that the church is just they like a block. They come, a lot of the church, not all of them, they come and they sit. And they seem to be astute. I mean, they seem to be paying attention. But then when you talk to them, you're like, where you get that from? I told you that. Well, Pastor, I was talking. You were talking to who? They're talking to them. Then I said, well, Pastor, I know what you said, but, but they had a good point. No, they good point. God don't have good points. God have principles and truth. Have a good point. If he, listen, if he have a good point, that means that he's not telling the whole truth because he got a point. When it's only the truth. Are you listening to me? What I'm trying to do, I'm, I'm not pressing it. I'm just trying to make you aware how Satan works. And just when you think you got a, a hold on him, he'll flip the strip on you. That's what he did. Come in for uh, spot our liberty, which we have in who? Christ Jesus. Why? What's the purpose? Here it is. What? Any kind of way. Some people sitting in, in some churches right here in this city, they, listen, the best thing they need to do is lead that church. The best thing, and find a word-based church. I'm not saying this church, but find a church that's teaching the unadulterated word of God. You know, listen, here it is. I guarantee if you go to the, the average church in this city, and put some kind of theological question to the general audience, I guarantee 95% of them will fill it. Because preachers want to preach on stuff rather than the gospel.
There's nothing. Listen, God already know what we have need of. He already knows that. I just, I just say with the word, as I say with the word, he gives me direction. But they, no, they don't want to preach. Or, they don't want to preach because the people say, well, I was bored. Why in the world are you bored listening to the word of God? You have, me, you have no interest in God. You have no interest in doing what God wants. You just want what's in God's hand, what's in his hand and not what's in his, his heart. It's important. When God becomes real to you, listen to me. You enjoy your time with him. I spend, my wife will attest to, I spend the majority of my time doing something, majority of my time, at least 80 to 90% of my time doing something to enhance my understanding of scriptures. I'm watching something, reading something, looking at something, carrying something, re-examining something, or doing my lessons. Remember, I don't work. So I'm off, I'm off the whole day. What do you do all day, Pastor? What do you do all day? I'm feathering my understanding of the things of God. If this is a bore to you, just give it up. Because, you know, trying to fake it, you ain't going to make it. Because some false doctrine, some false teaching going to come in and it's going to grab you up because you don't know the true word. Now, let's look at this, okay? Now, uh, go to Second Peter. Second Peter, thank you. Second Peter uh, chapter 2. Now, here it is, my sisters and my, br my brothers. I know I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty stern about what I teach. I am. I am. I've been given watch and care of your, over your soul. That's what the scripture says. I have the watch care over your soul. And I, I would hate for any one of my disciples or my pupils or my students they get caught up in craziness i'm like why in the world did you let that happen you sit up under me sunday after sunday wednesday after wednesday and you know we are word based well pastor well i know what you said but they showed me another scripture of course anybody can find any scripture to justify what they want to do they found scriptures to try to justify slavery Jim, Jim Jones found a, a, a scripture to justify killing all these people. All kind of crazy stuff. But listen, you never listen to the spirit of truth. You have, if you're saved, you have it. It's not reserved for me only, for the bishop, for the pastors. Every child of God has a spirit of truth living in them. He's your heavenly father. He's your caretaker. He watches out for you. He speaks to you. He directs you. How in the world can you get so lost listening to the spirit of truth unless you didn't listen to it? And more, more often than not, that's the issue. You fail to add here sound doctrine. Here it is. Look at verse 1. It says, but there were what? Where? Well, among the people. Now, what people are they talking about? He's talking about Israel. It's people that was with Moses who thought they knew more than Moses. Moses was a prophet. Joshua was not considered a, 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 even a leader until God told Moses to pass the staff over to Joshua. Aaron was not the prophet. Aaron was the priest. Moses was the man of God. God talked to Moses, and he said, I talked to Moses face to face. 
As a man talking to his friend, so I talked to Moses face to face. He said, but even back then, that was, that was false prophets among the people. Do y I want y'all to understand this, but most of us can't identify them because we don't know what a false prophet sound like, not look like. He said, now listen, even as there shall be, hear me say it, false teachers among you who privately shall bring in what? Damnable heresies. He said he's going to bring them into the church. I'm telling you all, he's going, they're going to bring them into the church. No one is going to walk in with a sign saying, oh, I'm a false prophet. Now, listen, because they're so good at what they do. I just showed you in the scriptures that Satan can be transformed into an angel of light and his ministers into ministers of righteousness. I just showed you that for that purpose. When they walk, when they walk in, he said, oh, man, he, he, he got it all together. Let's, let's put him up there. Oh, dude, oh, my. Put him up where? No. It's important that you understand these things. Listen, he said, now, listen. Even what are they going to be doing? Denying the Lord that brought them. You say, well, old pastor, nobody that I hear deny the Lord that, that brought us that I'm, that I'm, that I'm going to listen to. Paul said, Paul said, wake up, wake up, wake up. Paul said, he's not going to write out deny God. What are they going to do? They're going to be so, so, so sly and cunning that you don't know that he's denying the triune of God, the trinity of God, the Godhead. You don't know, you, you, you won't even know it. He, just, he said then, and bring it upon themselves, what, what kind of destruction? Swift destruction. He said, now, come down to verse two, listen to this. He said, and many shall hear this, Follow. I, 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 I love this. He said, many shall follow their what? Prenumptuous ways. That, that word means immoral. That's what the word means. Immoral ways. Hear this. He said, they will follow their immoral ways and, and their less cheapness doing because of them the truth. The true way will be mangled and defamed. Mm, 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 mm. Look at 2 Peter 3 and 1. Turn right over there. Pick up 1 and 3. Now, now, Peter's writing here. Peter said, now listen. Chapter 3, verse 1, he said, now listen. Go to verse 1. He said, now this is, how many? The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in which, both, in both which I stir up your pure mind. That pure mind, that word pure mind is another word for your conscience. I stir up your conscience or the conscience of your mind by way of remembrance. And what is it that he wanted him to remember? Go to verse 2. That ye may be mindful of the word which was spoken before by the holy prophets. And so I'm, I'm, I'm showing you this verse because I'm, 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 I'm telling you over and over again, I'm staring up your pure mind. By the words that I'm preaching and teaching to you, to step your conscience, there are false prophets in pulpits around the city, around the state, around this nation, around this country, around this world. And don't be bamboos. Everybody say Jesus. The Bible says everyone to say Lord, Lord. Everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall, shall not enter. Uh, they would say, Lord, didn't I do this in your name? And he said, what, what did he say he's going to say? Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. 
But they, listen, their name was in neon lights. Put the name, put the name up. Listen, we have traffic at, or, or traffic jams. Everybody trying to get to see them. And they did this and they did that and they built this and they built that. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But it, God would say, and though that day, I will say unto you, depart from me. And he and, and he said, he would say, Lord, did not do such and such and such and such and such and such in your name. He said, I will say unto them, depart from me. I never knew you. You did it, brother. You didn't do it for me. If you're living for yourself, if you're living for yourself, you're no good to God. I live for the sake of Jesus Christ. I live for his glory. You have to make that own personal statement. And listen, and when you say it, God will call you on it. We love to sing this song, For Your Glory. I would do anything. And you, I ain't even going to go there. I don't want y'all already mad at me. But here's what he's saying. When you say these false prophets, he said, you have to have an ear. Why? Because what subverts the gospel is not their doing, it's their preaching. That's why the Bible say, the Spirit say, him that has an ear, he said, I to see a ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. And Satan will bamboozle you. Don't you ever think that you don't ever think you can outwit Satan. You are listen, without Jesus Christ, you are no match for Satan. He will take your lunch money every day. But with the Lord, you can repel him. With the Lord, you can identify him. With the Lord, you can resist him. With the Lord, you can correct him. With the Lord, you can eject him. With the Lord, you can straighten him out. With the Lord, you can say, just like Jesus said, you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. It's the church. This is probably one of the weakest times the church has ever been in history. The church is so fickle. Why? Because they, they wean in on false prophets. God has one standard. God has one church. God has one standard. God has one church. God has one gospel. One standard, one church, one gospel. How is it that we so dis, uh, disenfranchised? How are we so discombobulated? All over the place. This church has this idea. This church had this idea. This church. I'm. Listen, I'm not talking about how, which side you want to put the, the napkin boxes on. I'm talking about in doctrine. I'm talking about the tenets of faith. I'm talking about the things our core value, our beliefs. I don't understand this false doctrine. False teachers, false prophets, apostles have crept into our church. And he's caused this mess. Now, the church is losing attendees and souls by the droves. They say the church is confused. They can't even get together. Why should I go there? Isn't it something? We can we can pile on, on Sundays. We can fill every foot every NFL football stadium. One little foot, one little pigskin. All the people come to see one little pigskin ball go up and down the field. And yeah, through the nose too. But the Church of God is laid bare. And it's not all the people fault that don't come. It's what the churches are teaching. Well, I can I can hear it online. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. We we established Sunday that what showing up was what had to battle. Had to battle. 
the false prophets will tell you, oh, yeah. And so what we do, now we push the church to, to, to the internet. And you know when you're at home listening to me on the internet, you're not paying half attention to what I'm saying. I know. I listen to me on pay half attention to what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, you're busy, right? You know, you're washing dishes or something. And you have to go to the restroom. Or you go in the refrigerator to get a cup of uh, get a soda. A cup of, you, you miss half the sermon. It's a time that we are to come together and be sealed and get instructions from our Heavenly Father that we should leave, leave here and go out there in those streets and make a difference. But we first got to make sure we're getting sound doctrine. Nothing false, nothing amalgamated, nothing mixed, but nothing but sound doctrine. Let me close out on this one. First John, first John two. I am, I'm so, I, I really don't know except the Lord intervenes and calls a paradigm shift. The church is sliding. Now, the, listen, the church of God shall prevail. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ shall prevail because God always have a remnant, always. But to see what I'm seeing now, it's almost scary. If we're doing this now in our lifetime, Say the Lord delay his coming another 200 years. Healing on every hand. I mean, just crazy. People in the church just as crazy as people on the street. These are supposed, supposed to be born again Christians. I've been, I've been going to church my whole life. Okay, let me get, let you get this. 2 and 18, do you have it? Here it is. Little children. See the endearing tone, little children. It is the last time. It is the last time. And as ye have heard, that who? That the Antichrist shall come. Let's read the next one. Even now are there what? Many Antichrists. Where? Whereby we know that it is the last time. Not that they're coming, they're here. That's what I'm telling you, they're already here. Honey, can you bring up uh, your cover slide? I love this picture. First lady found this for my, for my lesson. They are wolf and sheep clothing. They are already here. They are in churches. They are lying steadily. Satan is positioning them because that's going to be a great surge as we go closer and, gra and, and gravitate closer and closer to the end time. So he said, my, my little children, I'm writing you right now. I'm telling you, you have heard it. And the last time the Antichrist, he said, I'm like, no, they're here now. He wrote this. John, the revelator, the same one that wrote the book of Revelation. If anybody has a revelation, it's John the revelator. He said, they're here now. Trying to subvert the gospel. If they were there then, don't you think they have multiplied and dispersed? even more, they sharpen their game. But the problem is they don't have to do much sharpening because the church ain't doing much learning. They don't have to do much sharpening. Only thing, listen, only thing they need to do is just stay one step ahead of the church. 
If they show up early, they beat half the church. If they, if they read their Bibles on a consistent basis, they're ahead of the church. If they show up for prayer, because they do, I'm talking about these false prophets, and they do, they're ahead of the church. And this is why the church gravitate toward them, because they seem to be people of prominence. Are y'all listening to me? I'm not just telling y'all this. I believe I'm being used by the Holy Spirit to remind y'all, don't get caught up thinking that we have it all together because we don't. We have to stay on God. The Bible says, be vigilant. Why? Because your, your adversary, the devil, what? Walks around like what? Like a doing what? False prophets. Amen. We're going to stop there for tonight and we'll pick up. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. My goal is to teach you everything that I know on any given time that I stand here. And sometimes um, I don't get through no more than four or five scriptures, but hey, that's all right. We, listen, we ain't in no rush, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, ain't nobody ready to die, is it? Okay, we good. <laughs> we good then. Okay, okay, we good. Hey, Amen. Listen, I want you all to do your own reading and studying on these false prophets. This is just not something, well, he's talking about devils. I'm talking about no, talking about no devils. They are devils, or at least they're being empowered and manipulated by Satan. But I'm talking about people that will really. Listen, get you twisted up because you don't understand what they're doing. It's a plot. It's a ploy. It's a plan. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Amen. As we get ready to give. Amen. God is faithful.